I got cystic fibrosis See I've got cystic fibrosis What's going on guys? Welcome back to another week on the channel. Uh, this week I'm filming from Orlando, Florida. We're out here on vacation, me and my family. We are seeing Disney World, the happiest place on earth. Um, so, if you guys hear weird sounds, it's probably because I have a lot of neighbors around me or wildlife or whatever it may be. I'm out here filming by the pool in our little vacation rental we have and all my family is inside um, making lunch. So, I'm gonna try to do this video smooth for you guys and make it good and structured, but I'm just kinda like, scattered brain right now from all the walking and whatnot we've done at Disney. Anyway, as you guys know, this week's topic is scars and body acceptance. And to be honest, it's really hard for me to figure out what I'm gonna talk about and how I'm gonna approach this because my view is very different on this. And my view and approach itself conflicts in certain ways. You guys might pick up on that as I talk about it. But anyway, just to warn you, you know, I am gonna be blunt. I'm gonna tell you my approach, my mindset for it. I don't want sympathy. I try not to give too much sympathy. Um, I really try to keep things black and white when it comes to my health. And that's because it's make, it makes it so much easier to stay focused and make decisions. Um, I know there's a lot of gray when it comes to CF, but when you have a lot of gray and you focus on that, it's easy to second guess yourself. It's easy to get stumbled up on stuff and just kind of have those depressing thoughts. So I really just try to say it's either A or it's B and go one way and don't look back. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and get started. So you know, growing up as a kid, um, I was always called skinny. I was always sort of the smallest one of my friends. Um, we might be in fifth grade. I'd look like I was in second, second grade. Uh, that was just kind of the normal for me. And it's probably the same for you guys. Um, you know, and I played sports. I tried to be as normal as possible. But as a kid, I never really cared. I didn't care that the doctor said, oh, you need to gain weight or, or you did this or you did that. I felt healthy. I was growing. Um, and I even went on, I know in, let's see, I think elementary school, I was on a study for growth hormone. It didn't really help much because I'm only 5'7". But, uh, but it was one of those things, you know, my family and I knew I was smaller. We knew we wanted to be bigger, more normal size um, of my age. And so we did try things like that to um, help with my growth. But either way, I never really let it bother me as a kid. Um, I just played sports, I fit in with the others, I had my hobbies my, and the things I did with, and played like a normal kid. But once I got in high school, you know, I played sports but I quit sports to start bodybuilding and working out. So recently, I did a video project and I had a film crew come out to my house and a director um, as far as a pharmaceutical company. Anyway, a very interesting topic got brought up and it was, why did you start working out? And I said, oh, it's because I wanted to fit in, I wanted bigger muscles, I wanted to play sports, that kind of thing. And the director said, well, did you ever think, you know, you hid your CF all your life growing up and you felt a little bit more vulnerable or, or less normal than others. Did you think maybe you start working out to compensate for being smaller. You know, I never really thought of it that way. Maybe I did try to work out and gain muscle and get bigger to give me my little extra advantage to look normal or, or even look better than normal. Um, so I don't remember if that's the case or not, but I think that's a very interesting uh, point of view. So I've been working out ever since, you know, which is awesome and <laughs> it's sad at the same time because the working out bodybuilding lifestyle you hardly ever feel accepting of your body. You wanna constantly improve, constantly get better, and I'm proud of where I've come from and where I was at compared to where I am now, but I'm not satisfied. Um, you know, that's why I'm never accepting of my body, and it's interesting because, you know, with CF, um, we're never accepting of our bodies, but yet we always say, oh, don't worry about it, you have CF, you know, people don't know the struggles you've been through, and that's great. And I agree with that, but um, with working out and, and trying to get this perfectly symmetrical muscular body added on to that, it makes it even tougher. So instead of letting that get you down because you don't look how you want it to or you don't look how you want to, 
I use it as fuel and motivation. I want to be bigger. I want to be better. Um, and I know that. I don't want scars. I want to constantly improve. And I just use those goals and that desire as fuel um, to be healthier and be more fit. And, and so because better. of that, I know there's been instances where um, with topics such as this and similar to this, where doctors have told me, oh, well, you're in denial that you have CF. You know, you're in de denial of CF's curveballs that it throws you. And it's just BS. Um, you know, they say that crap because they want you to accept your body. They want you to accept CF and, and, and use your treatments and all that stuff. But what they don't realize is people are different and they all think differently and we're all independent as patients. And yeah, I use my treatments. And yeah, I realize I have CF, but I don't think about it 24 seven. And I don't give it the control over my life that you know others may give it. You know, I, I try to battle it all the way. I try to not get scars. I try not to um, accept my body and just feel content where I'm at because I constantly want to get healthier. And um, you know, that doesn't make it to where I don't do my treatments or I rebel, you know, like um, we might do as young kids. I don't rebel against my health. I embrace my health, but I rebel against CF, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know, um, it's funny because they've put up such a fight in the past, but now I've had doctors email me asking, how do you do this? What's your approach to this? Um, you know, just so that they can kind of relay that to their patients. Um, because I've gone against the norm, you know, and I'm not bragging about myself, but I'm just saying, you know, it's okay to have a different approach if you guys think differently than other patients or you think differently than your doctor does. As long as you know you're trying to better yourself and get healthier, um, nothing else should matter. And that, that's kind of the way I've gone about it. Um, and I have the numbers to prove it, you know, I've been really, really sick and now I'm a whole lot better and healthier than I ever was um, back when I was that sick. So just to prove to you guys, I do have some scars. I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, there's not too many really. I have the scars that I keep hidden, obviously, with my pick line scars. And the little white little dots here, all these scars. Um, and it's on each arm, you know, here and there. They don't bother me too much because obviously they're hidden. So um, that's one reason I've never wanted a port. I know this is another topic that I will ex share with you more on. But I've never wanted a port because I never want the scar. I don't want it to stick out. And to me, scars are something that just remind me that I have CF. And that's the same thing with a port. You know, that's something that sticks out of your body. Every single day you look in the mirror, you're reminded you have CF. And, you know, these things have happened to you. And it's not something I want to be reminded of, you know. Um, I try to stay healthy and do what I need to. But I don't let CF fully into my life, if that makes sense. So the other scar that bothers me a lot, it's, it's probably second, almost tied with the first of what bothers me the most, which uh, is just recently, but it's my pick line scar that they actually put in my chest, my tunnel pick line. So if you look here, or right here, um, they're trying to tell me it wouldn't be noticeable, and it definitely is, so I don't, definitely don't like that. Um, and the one that tops them all, guys, I've never shown, uh, the pictures or, or anything else to everybody, but um, is when I was on prednisone and I was on 60 milligrams prednisone for 10 months, almost a year, and I was on, you know, sh diabetic shots, all this stuff, and because I was on prednisone, my whole body was just filled with water. Um, you know, my face was fatter, my body was just swollen up, and that was when I was in college and I always cared about my looks. So that was the roughest time for me, especially with body acceptance, because I wasn't skinny. I definitely didn't look like I worked out. I just looked pudgy. Um, it was so weird and I hated it. But because of that, I have stretch marks from the prednisone and my body getting swollen up with water. So just show you guys a few of them. Um, here on my knee, and I know this is, this is small, it's kind of gone away, but there's one right here my other knee is way more noticeable. So if you look at this knee right there, look at that puppy. So, uh, you know, it's a big purple line, whatever. And I'm gonna try to show you guys my big one, which is on my waist. I got that fat waist when I was on prednisone. But it is here, maybe, maybe? Maybe this one. 
Oh, that's that's the puppy right there. But anyway, guys. So, thankfully, I don't have a lot of big scars. Um, and believe me, it is hard because I've tried many different things to prevent scars. And guys, believe me, I know I'm not making it any easier on myself. I've heard many times, why don't you get a port? It's so much easier. Oh, you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But this is why, you know, I don't want the scars. I don't want things to stand out. They remind me I have CF. You know, I've gone through the doctors many times and said, hey, I don't care how hard it is to get a pick line in my arms. Make sure you get it in my arms so that the scars will be underneath down here. Um, I've said, don't put it in this vein up here, my brachial vein, because when I, I know this is, this is egotistical it sounds like, but when I flex uh, in a picture, I don't want to scar my bicep. Um, you know, it's, it's things like that. And you know, um, same thing with the G-tube. You know, I've been said, before they said, oh, well, let's put a G-tube in you. You're 104 pounds. You have H1N1 swine flu. And I said, no, give me four or five days to eat all I can. And we made a deal that if I ate all I could and I gained a few pounds in four or five days in the hospital, they would not put a G-tube in so that I could get more nutrients. And believe me, I ordered takeout all the time. I ate hospital food all the time. I did everything I could to prevent getting a G-tube because I did not want that shown on my body. I did not want the scar from that either. So I know that's harder. I know it'd be a lot easier to just accept uh, my body and say, hey, I have CF and I'm, I'm okay with it. But um, I didn't, guys. And I really don't have any regrets. Um, and I know one day I might not be able to do that type of thing. I might have to accept uh, scars and getting a G-tube and a, a lung transplant for that matter. And I know that scars might be coming in my future, but I'm okay with that as long as I am trying all I can now to prevent that from happening. So guys, with all that being said, I know that we all get down sometimes. You know, I have my times where I might think too much about something or life's throwing me too many curveballs and I just am down in the dumps. And the one person I always call is my grandpa. My grandparents and I talk all the time. I wanna leave you guys with something he tells me almost every single time that that happens. And it's, you know you've tried your best and that's all that matters. And so what that means is, you know, as long as you've, you're doing all your treatments, you're eating all you can, you're exercising all you can, and you literally believe that you have done everything you can to stay healthy, then don't worry about the rest. Nothing, you shouldn't worry about something that's not in your control. So, so I hope that helps you guys. Um, you know, like I said, this is a very different approach. I realize that, and I don't know if I've been able to express it as, as clearly or as, as much as I've wanted to. Um, you know, like I said, I'm kind of, kind of rushing on vacation here, but um, that's it for me this week, guys. I hope you guys have liked this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Comment down below. Um, if you have the same approach or something a little bit different or something that's out of the ordinary that um, other people haven't thought of and I hope you guys will watch the rest of the channel members videos this week and I'll see you guys next Thursday hashtag stay salty see I've got cystic fibrosis